it's interesting that you mentioned that in 2019 is when I had a hot flash and did not know what was happening with my body. Felt like I was literally burning up. There was an inferno inside me. It was uncomfortable. It was scary. And I, I just, I really felt unprepared. Check it out. Take it down. so glad you're joining me today here at Living Loud, Living Long, L4, helping you to live healthy for our one-stop community for 50 Up Women that's grounded in good medicine. As part of our community, we bring you ideas for living healthy and strong, mentally, physically, and financially. You can get more ideas with our premium podcast on Podbean by joining our interactive community with app or supporting us by liking, sharing, and reviewing our podcast. You can find out more about us by visiting our website at livingloudlivinglong.com. We look forward to seeing you at our website or podcast anytime. A big shout out to our patrons who make our show possible. I'm Dr. Candace Hughes, and today we're focusing on entrepreneurship and women's health with menopause solutions from an amazing startup founder, Deborah Dickinson. Debbie, welcome to Living Loud, Living Long podcast today. I'm so thrilled to have you here and talking to us about women's health and your innovations in this space. Women's health is a very important topic here at Living Loud. We are all about innovating and finding ways for women to be healthier and have a a wellness, well-living lifestyle. Thanks so much for joining us. I am delighted to be here. Thank you so much for having me. This is really a a special thrill. We have a few questions that we want to ask you today about your work in the women's health space. You have an impressive background with degrees in business from University of Pennsylvania, Wharton, and a JD at Harvard Law School, after which you were an HR executive. What motivated you to shift your career and take an entrepreneurial path? Thank you. Yeah, I I do actually have a a pretty interesting background and path from the standpoint of studying business, um, then studying law and and practicing law for for a number of years and uh, really enjoying that uh, in in the area of of health and and wellness and benefits, really. So, you know, the two kind of tied together. And then I took a hiatus and raised my raised my family. So I, I raised kids, and during that time, did a number of fun and endeavors. You know, Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts, and um, you know, a lot of community in, involvement. A number of organizations, especially um, addressing women and um, abused and neglected children, and a lot of ministry work, fellowship with, with various churches. I moved quite a bit with my my husband and and, and family. But during that hiatus was also also very interested in a number of entrepreneurial pursuits. So I had fun with, with a, a number of different endeavors. And then when I became an empty nester, was actually considering getting back into the practice of law. At that point, had moved to Florida and had practiced in Atlanta, you know, uh, Georgia before that. And um, was considering taking the the, the Florida bar. And, um, and and as I said, I had a hot flash. And after that, and understanding, you know, menopause and what's happening with my body and lack of solutions really shifted focus to um, actually working with my daughter and, and creating a solution that, that we're very excited about. For someone who is very cognizant and, and careful relative to, to my health, you know, the healthy lifestyle, healthy eating, um, exercise. I do all the all the things that one tries to do and I'm in great shape and doing well, but something was happening with my body. Then recognized and, and spoke to other women and then actually um, my uh, stepmother uh, at the time was very helpful and said, okay, you know, this is what's happening. But then it struck me at 51, why, why is this so new, so foreign, so different? So why was I not prepared? And, and I know I was prepared for puberty. I know I prepared my 
my daughters I have two daughters for for puberty and of course there's education in the schools um reproductive health and, and that sort of thing but somehow you know the sunrise is the reproductive the beginning of the reproductive years you know puberty but we don't have that conversation the sunset that says you know as, as the reproductive years wind down which which is perfectly fine in, in midlife whether we've had kids or chosen not to have kids it's it's our prerogative um or, or should be and and then our body you know we we, we reclaim reclaim our body right we we are not you know in the making babies or you know or, or you know that whole cycle but now can really lean into the season of our lives where we can focus on self and really the things that bring us joy and and be empowered i i was disappointed that it was such a surprise for me and I recognized in talking to other women that, that I was not alone. Many women were not, didn't have a good understanding. And at that point, and I mentioned the 2019, at that point, it was not as it is right now, where we, you know, in, in 2022, over the last two and a half years or so, people have really started opening up more. But at that point, that was not the case. So I recognized instantly that was there was shame, there was secrecy, there was a level of discrimination, ageism, and it was not accepted, you know, people would whisper and, and, and say, okay, yes, I, I know what you're talking about or whatever, but people were just not comfortable, don't have support, don't have the support of community. You know, many didn't have, physicians are not often certified in, in menopause. So they're not, they're not resources. There is not a, a level of connection and community it really motivated me to do something. So to have those conversations, to be the lone voice in the room saying, hey, I'm having a hot flash, you know, oh, good. And then, you know, I, I bring attention and, and say, okay, let me, let me tell you what this is and explain it, normalize it, destigmatize, you know, what, what's happening because it's natural, it's normal. There's nothing wrong. There's not a disease. There's no illness. This is just what happens as, as we get older and, and our body fluctuates in terms of hormones. So it was important for me to feel empowered and, and the more comfortable I was with what was happening with my body and the more I spoke to other women and normalized it and, you know, kind of connected um, relative to these experiences. What we also realized is people weren't talking. The mothers weren't sharing with their daughters and girlfriends weren't always connecting. So it, it really motivated us to start a community um, on Facebook and talk about, you know, health and wellness and menopause and, you know, start a sisterhood. So it's called um, multi-generational sisterhood. And so that, that was the initial start just on uh, women's health. Yeah, I, I like a number of things that you were saying there. One thing that you mentioned about how we teach younger women about puberty, but nobody is teaching women as they age about the next phase. And uh, we're not teaching each other. We don't have clinicians teaching us. And I think even, even if you are aware of, you know, have a good understanding of health in general and aware of wellness and so on, we get so caught up in day-to-day -day life of we're so busy, we are taking care of children or taking care of other family members or taking care of everyone except ourselves right. um, that we don't think we just brush off these things. We don't think we don't connect the disparate things that are happening and say, yes. this is all part of some one thing. And we, and we don't really investigate it or see, is there anything I could do to help myself? We're just too busy and we're not used to taking care of ourselves. So I, I agree with you that there should be a more uniform introduction and preparation. Right, right, right. And, and, and I think it's twofold. One, one is the same in, in schools. You know, if we're going to talk about puberty, we should talk about menopause. It doesn't have to be in depth, but, but at least set the stage. There are two parts to this, right? You know, so the reproductive years start, they, they're going to wind down and then X, Y, Z. So, so at least uh, have an introduction at that point. So it's not, you know, a shock and a surprise, you know, at 50 something, you should not be surprised at something that, that is, that happens to every woman, right? If you live long enough, you, you will um, enter menopause and then just the education around it. What is menopause? That's actually a single day in your life. There, there's so much confusion and misinformation. And then as, as you were saying, I think you hit it on the head. You know, we don't often put ourselves first. 
And there are so many things you can unpack that. That, that would that'd be a whole nother, a whole nother discussion. But because we're often the only ones in our households that, that are experiencing whatever, there are 34 symptoms of menopause, whatever it is that, that we're experiencing, we tend to discount it. You know, it's not as important. It's if it's something that happened to our significant others or spouse or children, then oh by golly, we're gonna figure this out and we're gonna do something and we're gonna help. But when we tend to be the only one affected by something. Uh, we tend to to downplay it. We tend to, you know, just deal with it or grin and bear it when when in fact it, it's important that that we take care of ourselves, that we understand what's happening and that we find solutions and it's okay to be comfortable and it's okay to make sure that that we do the things that are important for us. You've developed an innovative uh, wearable device. Can you tell us more about uh, this innovative device you've developed? How does it work? What does it do that could help potentially help women who are in menopause? Just to go back a little bit with, with my story, you know, with experiencing hot flashes and the level of discomfort and the fact that it was so pervasive, you know, hot flashes, night sweats, that's hot flashes at night, which, you know, disturbs sleep. What I recognized, the, the commonality as I spoke with women and understood what, what they were doing and then did, you know, research and talk to doctors and stuff, you know, cool sensation helps when you're having a hot flash. Hmm, we, we didn't quite know, you know, why that helps or why, but, but it does. So, you know, putting your hands under cold running water. Um, I have a girlfriend that puts her hand on a, on a cool granite countertop, you know, that natural stone helps. Some people stick their head in the freezer or you get, you know, a cooling gel, a cooling spray. Um, that whether you spray it on your face or whatever. What, what I recognized in my journey was that discretion, I found discretion was, was important. So if I'm having a hot flash, I wanted immediate relief and I wanted discretion. And no one in, in the room should know I'm having a hot flash and no one in the room should know I'm trying to seek a solution for that hot flash. So wearing a fan around my neck or wearing it on a hat, you know, like, like a baseball cap <laughs> um, or, you know, spraying things in my face or, you know, there are certain things that just kind of bring attention, unnecessary attention. So so what I knew is a cool sensation helped. And I saw that a lot of people were, were doing this. And I had a, bought a number of gadgets and fans and things to keep in the freezer and you pull it out, you know, the upgrade from the bag of peas and corn <laughs> that you have in yes. your freezer that you can just take out and put on the back of your neck. What I recognized was that the wrist was just as effective as the neck. And, and you know, so you put something on your forehead or you put something on your neck, it feels good. But I didn't want to do that. I had Zoom calls. I, you know, was in public. Well, you know, some of that was through COVID, so I was at home and on Zoom calls. But when I moved a cool sensation to my wrist, I found that it was just as effective as as my neck. The aha moment was, gee, it would be great if I had on demand a cool sensation when I needed it. Um, and and juxtapose when you're uncomfortably cold. A warm sensation helps. So you think of people, you know, you hold on to the hot cup of cocoa when, when you're feeling cool or a cool glass of water. We have some people with hot flashes. I just, you know, they said, I hold on to a, a icy glass, you know, a glass filled with ice. And, and that feels good because, you know, there are receptors in, in the hands and, and on the end, on the inner wrist. And that's that's actually what we've come to understand is those receptors in our body. And there are various parts of our body, including in the hands and the wrist. And once those receptors get these cool sensations or warm sensation, depending on what's happening, that sends a message to your brain. In, in the brain is the thermoregulatory center. Um, of the body, and that helps to, you know, moderate your temperature and to, and your perception of comfort through temperature and touch. So the science is thermoregulation. Ultimately, that's what motivated. Gee, it would be great if we had a wearable that gave the cooling and the warming sensation on demand. It's discreet. Nobody knows what's going on. So that that was the initial impetus. And through the community that we've grown and the insights of women sharing their experiences and such, we've evolved that so that it's not just a discrete heating and cooling sensation, but it's also sensors and information to understand what's happening with your body at the time of each, we'll call it a thermal event. Thank you so much for joining us today and sharing your story of your, your journey and your innovations and your, your dedication to 
helping other women, you know, understand this stage of their life and look at it with a positive view and find solutions for any challenges that they're facing as they they go through this. It's something that uh, we support at Living Loud, Living Long as well. And it's been you know, fantastic to have the opportunity to hear about your journey and, and where you're going with the menopause solutions. Thank you so much. That, that's wonderful. You know, Thermoband, the, the website has information on, on what we're doing and who we are and the Facebook group. So yeah, a lot of information can be found there. And it, this was really a, a delight to chat with you. You are the, the platform to talk about women's health um, and wellness is, is just, it is very special. So, so I appreciate, I appreciate this opportunity and I love what you're doing. Oh, thank you. Looking for a positive, uplifting community for 50 and up women? We celebrate 50 and up women who are living loud, living long, with authentic stories of real people who are creating the life they want, winning athletes, entrepreneurs, and creatives. We are tsunami wiping away outdated ideas of who we are. We give voice, we give visibility, we give community, learning, sharing, changing, vibrant, healthy, strong. If that's you, you belong with us. If you enjoyed our podcast, support our work by clicking like, subscribing, becoming a member of L4 at livingloudlivinglong.com and donating to our Patreon account so we can keep bringing you awesomely inspiring people. See you next month.